You are listening to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mojica. I'm a holistic therapist, and my goal is to teach people how to find safety in themselves. I use nutrition, herbalism, self-inquiry, and somatic therapy to heal the body and mind of trauma. I have learned that each and every one of us has the ability to heal, to love, and to access all of the answers we're looking for. To do this, we first need to learn how to listen to our bodies and understand our minds. Let us begin. So welcome, welcome to today's episode. Today's episode is going to be um, a little mix, uh, it's going to be interactive. We're going to be talking about finding safety in the body and what that means. And then I'm going to lead you in a somatic self-inquiry exercise to actually experience what I'm talking about. And then we're going to go a little deeper. And my friend and editor, Evan, is going to be sharing his sound healing that he composed, which will just help us deepen the somatic field and the awareness and the experience of safety. So what does it mean finding safety? I think what's important about that is to think about the physiology, which just means the physical state of the body, how the physical body functions. So let's think of how does the body function from a state of feeling safe? It's at ease. It's easy to breathe. Maybe you talk a little slower. Your brow line is relaxed. Your shoulders feel relaxed. Your spine is nice and straight and everything kind of falls around it and is supported by it. You walk on the earth slowly or quickly with a connection. You're connected to the earth. You feel your step. You feel your body. One of my favorite words is embodied. When we're safe, we're embodied. We're able to feel our bodies and we're able to feel how the body connects with everything around it. It's the safety zone. We get to come back there. If we think of the internal organs in a state of safety or the internal system even, we think of the heartbeat, the heart rate, calm, steady, strong. We think of the veins and the blood vessels vasodilating, they open, there's better blood flow, which means the internal organs and your tissues and your muscles and your joints, your bones, everything's being fed with more nutrition and oxygen. Your breath is deeper. Your breath is going down into your belly, not just in your chest. So it's a deep breath that cleanses the lungs themselves, but then deeply pushes oxygen, life-giving oxygen throughout your body. You're able to digest really well. You have regularity. The intestines, the colon, the bowels, nothing is constricted, it's open. So you're you're regular with how you digest and process and eliminate your food. The stomach feels relaxed. You walk with an openness in your chest and your stomach. It's free to just be there. It doesn't feel like it's bracing. The jaw delicately, ever so slightly, hangs open. The lips usually stay together, but the jaw is open. The teeth aren't clenched. The jaw joints aren't clenched. The forehead is relaxed. This is the physiology of safety. How the body physically functions, biochemically functions from a state of safety. And what's so interesting to me about that is when the body is feeling expansive, the mind feels expansive. The mind feels expansive and flexible when the body is expansive and flexible. So you don't take things as personally. You don't judge things as quickly as you might. You don't believe in things as intensely as you might. And I mean, believe things that are stressful. 
you know, believe in good things, things that bring you peace, believe in them all you want, they help. But things that are stressful, other people's situation, things we see on the news, we don't quickly attach to them. We see them, we respect them, we respect someone's going through them, and we're even available to help if the person wants help. But it's coming from an expansive, safe, centered self. So what about danger? You know, the opposite of safety is danger. And the concept that underlines every human being who experiences trauma or stress in their bodies, the underlying belief when you're in a traumatized state is danger, is threat. And more so, it's the expectation of danger and threat. Because very often when we're in a traumatized state, nothing's actually happening. It's in a response to something that has already happened, and it's in anticipation for expecting it to happen again. So if you were abused, or someone yells at you, or there's a really loud banging noise, or you saw something scary on the television, your body's holding that, and it's projecting it out into your world. So you're caught between a past and a future that feels like threat, that feels dangerous. And how does the body respond to that? What's the biology of danger? Well, it's the opposite of the safety. There's a tension, sometimes globally, sometimes every inch of the body is tense. The eyebrow is furrowed. The eyes are very nearsighted. There's a hypervigilance in the, the upper part of the of the of the eye and the and the ears and the forehead, the upper part of the face is just always looking around for threat. The jaw is very tight. The teeth are grinding. The tongue is even tight. The throat's constricted. The breath is very shallow. Sometimes it barely permeates below the, the like your nipple area, your mid chest, just stays right up. The stomach is clenched. You might be constipated for days or weeks. You might be inflamed. And for some of us, inflammation will lead to loose stools. You might have chronic stomach aches and nausea. Maybe you can't digest anything. Maybe your stomach's very sensitive to what you can eat. The heart rate is often increased or irregular. The blood vessels are constricted. You're getting less oxygen to those internal organs and joints and tissues and muscles. So those joints and tissues and fascia and muscles, those also begin to constrict. The body is in a perpetual state of bracing for impact because it's remembering and expecting threat. And for those of us who grew up in traumatic situations or were born if the birth, if your birth was very traumatic, you were born into a traumatic situation. A lot of us don't have early memory of being human beings and knowing what it was like to be free. It's a concept to us. It's not an experience. So what I'm going to lead you in a little bit, I'm going to lead you into experiencing safety. And some of you are going to have a really hard time with this, and I'm going to explain why. When a body is so used to threat and so used to danger and so used to expecting it, someone with PTSD or general anxiety, depression, the physical body is used to being numb and or braced, constricted, tight. That over time becomes um, a new truth for the, the ego. It's an unconscious truth. It's a somatic, meaning body truth. That constriction equals safety. If I'm braced, I'm ready. If I'm anxious, I'm on the lookout. If I'm constricted, nothing can, can touch me. So to start feeling safety, to start feeling joy... You actually have to physically 
train yourself to be comfortable with expansion. You have to become comfortable with how it feels when the muscles start to release, when the breath goes deeper, when the heart slows down. And there's going to be an internal mechanism that fights against this. And again, it's that trauma response. And someone with developed developmental trauma, meaning throughout your development as a child and teenager into adulthood, you experience a lot of many, many traumatic or stressful events. Your body developed expecting to feel this way and that this way, I should say, your body developed this feeling from the expectation of more threat. So this physical state that your body's in actually feels protective. And this is why joy and love and vulnerability and compassion and intimacy can feel like real threats because there's a physicality to joy and safety and openness and it's being open. So when the armor of your trauma response, which is your constricted tissues and muscles and blood vessels, when that armor starts to dissipate a bit and it softens, your body might actually become stressed in response to feeling more relaxed. And this can be really frustrating and, and create feelings of hopelessness for some individuals because they think, wow, I can't handle being happy. I can't handle being sad. I can't handle feeling safe. I can't handle feeling stressed. There's nowhere for me. I can't handle being alive. And I understand that. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. Your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do in a traumatized state. It got stuck there. And I'm going to show you how to unstuck it. <laughs> okay. We're going to thaw the freeze together. We're going to soften the constriction. And if you're someone walking around with a lot of constriction in your body, a lot of PTSD, a lot, you get easily triggered, you easily explode on people or things. Be really gentle here. Don't expect a lot. We're not looking for global healing. I'm not looking for head to toe transformation. We're really looking for one place in the body to find safety in and to be able to actually handle the feeling of safety in that place in the body before building on it. So take a break, get some water, get comfortable, do not be driving. I don't want anyone who's working with any machinery. This is not to, this isn't the kind of meditation you want to do while you're doing something. You want to be with friends or alone in a quiet place, sitting still, giving yourself, you know, the next 10, 20 minutes to really be with your body. And now we're going to get ready for our somatic self inquiry, which just means we are inquiring through sensation. We're not using the mind, we're using the body. So the first thing you want to do is let your body be in a situation or a position where you don't have to hold it up. I want you to be laying, whether you're laying on the earth, laying on a bed, laying on a yoga mat, laying on a couch, or sitting up, but sitting up in such a way where nothing has to hold itself up. So you're sitting on a recliner, or you're sitting on the ground with your back against a rock, or you're sitting on a very comfortable chair, or you have pillows propped up on the wall behind you, and you're on the bed. So find your sitting place. It's very comfortable, and you're just being held. And the first thing to do is just focus on the first layer of your body, your skin. Just notice your skin. Your eyes can be opened or closed for this. And notice the, 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 the magical place between the skin and the surfaces you're touching. The little hairs, the magnetic field, the aura. 
just notice that first and feel how much space is between your skin and the air, your skin and the wall, your skin and the surface. Just feel that first. And then just really slowly notice all the parts your body is touching, all the parts that are being held. If you're sitting up, feel your feet on the ground, but don't just feel the ground. Notice how the ground is holding your feet up. There's nothing your feet have to do. Let your feet just surrender into that. And then your legs, whatever's holding up your legs or whatever your legs are laying on, they don't have to do anything. See how they feel and what they do when they're not holding themselves. Do they splay out? Do they do the knees buckle? Do they turn to the side? And what do the legs do when they're not having to do anything? Just feel that and let them do that. And we come up to the pelvis area and feel your butt in the seat, feel the pressure of it. Or if you're laying on your back flat, feel how it's equal to the rest of your body. Feel your sexual organs. Breathe into them and let them be relaxed. Notice you're allowed to just be relaxed here and nothing you have to do. Nobody needs you. If you notice a, a vulnerability in this area, this is a moment to grab uh, something with weight to it, like a pillow or a jacket or a blanket and put that over your genitals, over your pelvis. For women, you might even want this to come all the way up to your belly button to really, so it's over where the ovaries and the womb would be. I should say, where the ovaries and the womb are. And just take a moment to feel the difference if you did that or not. And let that part settle. And then notice your stomach. Let your stomach just settle into where it is. It doesn't have to do anything. It can open up. You might feel gas moving around. You might feel empty. You might feel the food you ate or the water you drank. And just notice that. We're not changing anything with our bodies. We're just noticing them. And then we reach the chest. And notice, how am I breathing? Is my breath going into my belly or does it stop at the top of my chest? And play with it a little bit. Notice, how does it feel when I breathe into my chest? How does it feel when my breath fills up my belly first, then my chest? And this is one place we want to start to shift something and see what it feels like. So we take a deep breath through our nose so it fills up our belly first and then our chest. And Breathe out your mouth until your stomach pulls back as tight as it can, squeezing out all that air. Just do two or three of those. And do one more. Filling up belly first, then filling up chest, then exhaling all the air from the belly and the chest. And then without doing anything, just notice how your breath returns. And how that return feels. And then let your arms come in and your shoulders and your neck and notice how does it feel if you're sitting up. Just let those arms and shoulders just hang. You don't have to hold them up. Or if you're laying down, maybe open them up if you want to. See how they feel if they're just laying the way they are. And we feel the neck and notice how it feels when the breath goes over the throat, you know, into the mouth, through the throat. Feel the breath going over the throat. Jaw, nose, eyes, forehead, ears, scalp. Just let that head be held. So let it fall back onto the wall behind you. Let it lay on the ground or on the pillow. Just let it be held. We don't want any part of the body holding itself up here. And the reason why is because it's going to help you see where you're constricted. 
When you're holding yourself up, you have to constrict a bit to hold yourself. When you're not holding yourself, you get to see, well, what is just constricted all the time? What parts of my body are tight that don't have to be, that aren't functioning or performing anything right now? And that's the next piece. Notice where you're holding constriction. This is where you get to learn the parts of your body that don't feel safe, that don't feel very open, that are clenched, that are guarded, that are hypervigilant, that are imp- that are bracing or are constricted. And just take note in your mind which parts are the most constricted. Check in with all these parts. And our goal is not to force these parts to open, actually. We don't want to do that at all. Our goal is to be aware of where we're constricted and to use that awareness to find where we're not constricted. So you can pause this if you need more time. Otherwise, take a, take another inventory, take a breath, scan your body with your mind and feel where am I open? And one of the best ways to test that out are the ears. The ears, not where the ears connect, but the ear lobes. They just hang. They don't have muscles in them. They don't move. Focus on your ear lobes and see how they feel. And just see, okay, what other parts of my body feel the way my ear lobes feel? And speaking of the ears, you may have heard a siren in the background for a moment while I was talking. Notice what your body does when it hears that. You may hear noises or feel vibrations while you're doing this wherever you are. And notice what parts of the body constrict when I hear these things. These are the parts that are activated. These are the parts where my trauma response goes. And take your time here. And again, notice where am I open? Where is it easy? Where is there no constriction? For some of you, it might just be your ears. Others, you may find your chest. You might find your pinky finger, your knee. For men, a lot of times it is the genitals because they hang. There's not a lot you can do about that. For women, it may be your breasts because they hang. You want to notice parts of your body that are hanging. If you're gender fluid or you're in transition, no, notice what parts of your body are hanging. Parts that have more cartilage or more fat, don't have a lot of muscle, they hang. There's a lot of relief in that hang. So notice that. I like to use that. Just so you can see, okay, where else am I relaxed? Where else am I open and just hanging, hanging out? And what we want to do is take a breath and see how deep you can enter the part that is relaxed. How deeply you can go into that feeling of safety and release, that openness. And as you breathe into it, notice if there's any somatic responses. For instance, if it's your chest and you go into it, does your, do your arms want to spread open? If it's your hips, do you want to twist them or, or you know, uh, stretch them? If it's the legs, do they want to stretch a little bit? If it's the fingers, do they want to move and stretch? If your body wants to move, that's beautiful. Do it very slowly, like you're in water. Graceful movements and let it flow and breathe into it again. And just take your time dancing with your body. Just feel what parts are open, what parts are allowing you to breathe into them, what parts like to move. You might notice that as you're doing this, it spreads. That feeling of safety or openness will just start moving very slowly. If that's the case for you, follow it. 
We don't want to force it or direct it. We want to be really curious and follow it. So see where it's going. See where it takes you. And as you follow it, see if places that were once constricted start to soften, soften, or if the parts that are constricted are kind of like big rocks and this softening is like water and see if it just runs around it, just let it run around it. And as it does, the parts that are constricted again, thank them, that's a boundary. We don't have to know why the body doesn't feel safe there. We may know. Either way, let's respect it. Say, thank you. I hear you. I'm not going to force you to open up right now. And just enjoy the parts that are open. Now, some of you may be feeling numb or disconnected from your body. If that's the case, you want to make sure your eyes are open. And you want to take in something around you. A photo, a plant, an animal, a person, an object. Something that feels pleasant. And notice what part of my body can feel that pleasant thing I'm looking at. And whatever part of the body responds, that's where you want to focus your breath. If you can't do that, you want to take a break from lying down. You actually want to sit up. You want to take your hands and just press them around your body a little bit just to feel the edges of your body, to feel your boundaries. Sometimes even hitting your, your thighs with your hands like you're almost clapping them can bring some activation to the body, which we want. We want to feel our body a little bit. And if it's too uncomfortable for you to do this exercise, you just stop doing it. You open your eyes, you take a break, you walk around a little bit, you come back to it, or you just, you leave it till you feel ready. I want everyone to notice their body one more time. Where am I constricted? Where am I open? And let's just globally be with our whole body, the constriction and the relief. And prepare yourself to go into a little journey with the sound healing that Evan has created. And as you hear different sounds and feel them in the body, see what happens, how your body reacts. If it wants to move, you let it move. If it wants to stay still, you let it stay still. If it wants to stand up, you stand up. You let your body do whatever it wants to do during this journey. Let's go in.
bring yourself back very gently from that. And that just means open your eyes. You know, look around the room, feel your toes wiggle, like really slowly let your body come back. No rushing here. And if you have time and you feel really good, just lay here. Take a nap if a nap is what your body wants. Stare at the wall if that's what your body wants. Listen to it again if that's what your body wants. The best thing about this work is your body is creating a new groove in the nervous system to experience safety just from this session, just from this podcast. What's beautiful about the music is the music can take you there quicker. That's the magic of music. So anytime you want to, you can access this sound healing and just go right to the sound healing without the meditation. Whenever you're having an anxiety attack, whenever you're feeling scared, whenever you're feeling sad, and you'll start creating this reservoir in your body of self-regulation and healing and safety and comfort just from these vibrations. So I want to thank you for coming here and experiencing this with me. And thank Evan Glenn Adams for his just beautiful, delicate, empathic compositions so we could all experience um, that transformation. And if you feel like getting up, let yourself sit up a little bit. Press into the ground, press into the bed, the chair. Do a little pressing so you can feel yourself coming back into your body. Drink a lot of water, maybe have something really yummy to eat. Come back into yourself any way you like to. And see if you can keep this feeling of safety in your body. See if you can keep building on it throughout the day. And our work is just to be embodied, to notice when the safety shifts into fear and to be able to invite the safety back in by focusing on parts of our body that are already safe, even amidst crisis, even in the midst of pain and suffering and anger and terror, we can find safety. Sometimes it's in your toe. Sometimes it's in the blue sky above you. Sometimes it's in the mind. But the more we practice finding safety, the more the body will expect safety and will align and orient towards safety. And that's very good news. For more information on Evan's music, including more sound healings and other projects, you can visit Evan Glenn Adams. That's Glenn with two N's. EvanGlennAdams.com. And his the link for his work will be in the, the description of this podcast. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. So as always, before you go, take a breath. <sighs> Feel your body. Notice your emotions. And take that awareness into your life. I want to thank you for sharing this space with me. For more information on my work, or any events that I might be hosting, please visit holisticlifenavigation.com. And you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Holistic Life Navigation.